ever enjoyed a nice summer day and then you hear this fierce buzzing around your ear and then you slap yourself, you feel some pain. If you've done that, you probably experienced the visit of a mosquito. And today with Jennifer Gordon, our resident urban and medical entomologist, we're going to talk about mosquitoes. Hello, Jennifer. Hey, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Uh, you're with Bud Gledson's Consulting. I have to think that you've talked about mosquitoes in the past at length, and you've told me off, off camera that you find them very interesting. So I can't wait to hear what you have to share when it comes to the pesky mosquito. So let's tee it up. Tell us about some of the characteristics of the mosquitoes and why you find them so interesting. Sure, absolutely. So to start, you know, in the United States, there are around 200 different mosquito species, but it's important to note that not all of them bite people. In fact, different mosquito species prefer different hosts. So some of them may prefer biting birds, amphibians, lizards, mammals. I read a paper just today where there's at least one species of mosquito that might even feed off of worms. And then of course, some of them do bite people. And sometimes these preferences can be really strong where the mosquito's preferred host is very specific and that mosquito species is not really gonna deviate from its preferred host. But for some other species, that preference isn't as strong and they'll take blood meals from multiple hosts. But of the mosquitoes that bite people, we can kind of group them into two categories. There are those that irritate people and these are our nuisance mosquitoes. And then there are those that can spread germs to people and make them sick. And again, it's important to remember that not all mosquitoes can transmit germs or pathogens, and not all germs or pathogens can be transmitted. However, the diseases they can cause can be very severe, and hopefully we'll get to talk about that a little bit more later. So avoiding bites whenever possible is always the best practice, regardless of who you are and where you live. And while we're talking about mosquitoes, specifically the biting ones, it's only the female mosquitoes that drink blood and they take this blood to produce eggs. Otherwise, generally speaking, both male and female mosquitoes need sugar meals for energy, and one of the ways they get that is by drinking nectar from plants. So even though mosquitoes are kind of terrible, some of them may be beneficial pollinators, and I like to talk about that a little because one of the most common questions I get from folks is, you know, what purpose do mosquitoes serve? So even though they can really pester us, they do serve a purpose in nature. I had no idea. And I didn't know that only the females were biting me and uh, some of them eat on worms. I mean, that's crazy stuff. Yeah, it's wild. Mosquitoes are really interesting. I could talk about them for hours. Yeah, I can tell. I can, I can feel the enthusiasm, Jennifer. So <laughs> thank you for the details. You know, normally at this point, I ask the question, how do they get in like ants or termites? I don't know if that applies to this. Maybe more like, where do you find mosquitoes? Tell us about that. Sure. You know, I think in this situation, both questions are valid. You can find mosquitoes outside in a lot of different places, you know, in the city, in your backyard, on hiking trails, out in the country, uh, especially in areas that have untreated stagnant water, shade, and little wind. And you're more likely to encounter mosquitoes outside than inside, but mosquitoes can definitely make their way indoors as well and can affect a business. I know for me, nothing is worse than eating outdoors and feeling a mosquito biting my ankle or being asleep in a hotel and hearing a mosquito buzzing in my ear at night. And mosquitoes can make their way indoors often through open windows or doors. That is one of the reasons why intact window screens are so important. You know, those window screens allow airflow in, but keep insects, including mosquitoes, out. And it's really important that building maintenance make sure those window screens are in good repair because a hole that's even the width of the size of a pencil and sometimes smaller is big enough for a mosquito to get in. Uh, another useful piece of equipment buildings may want to invest in are air curtains. And these air curtains are basically just produce strong wind flow across a doorway that people can easily walk through, but prevent weak flying mosquitoes from getting in whenever the door has been opened. Okay, so interesting. Um, you know, when other insects get in like ants and termites, they can populate. Do mosquitoes do that? How bad or how, to what extent can the infestation become? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. You know, even a couple of biting mosquitoes can really 
ruin your experience both outdoors and in, but in areas with a lot of accumulating water that isn't being treated, you can really get a lot of mosquitoes. Uh, in preparation for this, you know, I was Googling, trying to find some pictures. And if you Google the phrase, lots of mosquitoes, and then look through the images that come up, you see several pictures where tens and maybe even hundreds of mosquitoes are landing on a single person. Uh, another time mosquito populations can get really bad is after natural disasters. Hurricanes, floods, and even wildfires can make conditions that are perfect for large populations of mosquitoes to emerge and harm people and really make a bad situation even worse. You mentioned earlier that the females need blood and they, all, they both need uh, nectar. I think you said that. What else do they need to survive? Are there certain temperatures or conditions? Absolutely. So all mosquito species require water to reproduce. However, just like what we were talking about with their preferred hosts, different species prefer to lay eggs in different types of water sources, such as the puddles that can be found in a yard, moist ground that is frequently flooded, uh, water held in containers such as bird baths and gutters, any garbage that can accumulate water, and in much more hidden places too, such as plants and sewers. Generally speaking, any untreated water source with little to no movement or flow could become a breeding ground for mosquitoes. Additionally, like some of the other insects we've talked about, mosquitoes are going to thrive in warmer temperatures, so they're going to be very common in spring, summer, and fall. Luckily, many parts of the U.S. do get a break from mosquitoes during the winter. However, in places where temperatures are warm year-round, mosquitoes can be a year-round problem. I lived in Baton Rouge, Louisiana for a couple of years, and there were definitely seasons that were worse than others, but mosquitoes could pretty much find you any time of the year if you weren't careful. Well, I know here in Ohio, I've never seen one in January. So what you said is true. <laughs> it's one good thing about winter. Yeah, it does keep the mosquitoes down, although we got the snow to deal with. Okay, so for facility managers or those in our audience, what would you tell them about getting rid of the mosquitoes? Yeah, this is a really great question. And, you know, I have to say, if mosquitoes are really bad and causing a lot of problems, reaching out to local public health departments, vector control agencies, or your pest management professional can help you kill those adult mosquitoes. However, there is a lot that building maintenance can do to protect employees and customers from bites. Like we talked about earlier, making sure all of the window screens in a building are free from holes is very important to keep mosquitoes out. And if a problem is really bad inside of a building, installing those air curtains may help as well. Mosquitoes can possibly make their way into buildings through other openings as well. So another best practice in general is closing any cracks and crevices with caulks and screen. And this should be able to help keep mosquitoes and some of those other pests we've been talking about out of the building. The next thing building maintenance can do is prevent water from accumulating. It only takes a bottle cap full of water for mosquitoes to grow. So making sure the outside area is free of any trash or garbage that can hold water is gonna be very important to keep mosquitoes from using those sources to breed in. Similarly, making sure drains and sewers are free of debris and allowing water to drain properly and not accumulate is very important to keep mosquitoes down. Another story from my, my personal life, you know, one time I was living in San Francisco and I kept getting these mosquito bites at night and they were really horrible and I could not figure out where they were coming from. You know, I kept my bedroom window closed and they were still getting me. Finally, I was looking in the basement and there was a drain between my apartment building and my neighbor's building that was blocked with algae that was allowing water to accumulate. And it turns out mosquitoes were growing in that water and getting into my house through an open window in the basement. So mosquitoes fly around, so you can't prevent mosquitoes from flying onto your property. However, a properly maintained building and clean grounds are going to be very important to prevent mosquitoes from growing. Yeah, interesting story. They can definitely get in the places that you might not expect. Um, you know, when you get a mosquito bite, it can itch, turn red. But what about the bigger picture, public health. Is there any implication there? Absolutely. Bill Gates wrote an article a few years back that said mosquitoes were the deadliest animal on the planet. And he was talking about the fact that mosquitoes can transmit pathogens that make people very sick and sometimes die. And while in the US, mosquitoes do not kill nearly as many people as they do in other parts of the world, people still get very sick every year from germs spread by mosquito bites. 
West Nile virus is one of those pathogens that can be spread by mosquitoes. And every year since it was first discovered in the US, people have gotten sick and some of them get very seriously ill and sometimes people do die. It is relatively rare, but it does happen. Uh, another example in recent memory is Zika. You know, I think most of us probably remember the Zika virus outbreak that happened a few years ago. That was spread by a mosquito. But there are other viruses as well, such as St. Louis encephalitis virus, Eastern equine encephalitis virus, and a few others. Mosquitoes can also spread germs to livestock and our pets too. Dog heartworm is an example of a disease caused by mosquitoes. But that nuisance factor that you were just talking about from these insects can affect public health as well. I mean, mosquito bites can be very itchy and even painful. And if a person gets a lot of them, the irritation can really take a toll on their day-to-day -day life. Additionally, if those bites are scratched open, other pathogens can get in and cause infections such as a staph infection. Mosquitoes are a very serious pest that can make people very sick and affect a business. And while managing these insects should be left to a professional, there is a lot that building maintenance and cleaning staff can do to help keep populations down and protect people from bites. Well, great information about the mosquito. Who knew all those details? Well, you did. So thank you for sharing those with us today. Anytime. Anytime.